Hey everyone, today I'm really excited to talk to Clement about something very near and dear to our hearts, which is why people end up leaving big tech. For so many engineers, getting into FANG or big tech is a terminal destination. They dream about it and think about it so much. And yet, when you look at the data, almost everyone who enters big tech, within a few years, they end up leaving. And Clement left for Algo Expert. I left to start a company called Taro. Um, and so we are among that crowd of people who left. And so the question is why? And so I'll kick it off right away and say one big motivation for why people end up leaving FANG after a few years there is purely financial. And what I mean by that is the outlier outcome is not possible when it comes to working in big tech, right? So you could be working there for a long time and make a really, really good income. There's no denying that. But what isn't possible is working there for a year and making $10 million dollars. That's pretty much impossible. And so even though the expected value of working in FANG is very, very high, the outlier outcome is not possible. The outlier is only really possible if you go out and pursue a zero to one startup where you have equity in a company and that company is expanding rapidly, right? So I think that's, Clement, the first reason uh, why people end up leaving, like me and you, why we end up leaving big tech. I totally agree. And just to share a personal example, I very recently posted a video on my YouTube channel where I shared all of my income from Algo Expert, Google, Facebook, etc. over the last six years. And just in the last three years, I've made you know multiple millions of dollars from Algo Expert. And that is something that no matter how good of a job I could have done at Google and Facebook, I never would have been able to make that much. You know, and I think that that is a huge motivation factor for a lot of people, ourselves included. But beyond just the financials, because I don't think it's limited at just financials, there's also that feeling of like owning your life, that feeling of agency, of having complete decision making ability. There's something to say about being able to make quick decisions, whether alone or with your partners or small team very quickly, very suddenly, versus that thing where you have to jump through so many hoops, so much bureaucracy. Just to give you an example, Rahul and I decided kind of on a whim to film these videos on our channels this week, whereas if we had been at Google or Facebook, we would have had to get so many different approvals from like 10 different VPs if we wanted to make a YouTube video about whatever product we were working on at the company. Right now, I can decide in the spur of the moment that I want to plug my company Algo Expert, you can go to algoexpert.io, use the promo code CLEM for a discount on the platform, and no one's going to get mad at me, except maybe Rahul. Hopefully yeah. that's okay, Rahul. <laughs> no, it's totally fine. No, I agree with you, though. I, I think there is some effect of muzzling in a big tech company where you have to be really careful about what you say, how you identify yourself with the company, and for good reason, right? Like, I don't think that, especially a company like Meta, where we both were, there's a lot of brand headwind. They don't want rogue employees to go out and like uh, damage the reputation of the company further than what it already is. And so, for example, for me, I run a company called Taro. If you're trying to get promoted or onboarded into your job, check out jointaro.com. You know, I didn't actually uh, have a product even while I was working at Meta because I was so concerned about that. I had a YouTube channel. I did a lot of Android tutorials, a lot of innocuous stuff, but I was very deliberate uh, about you know, actually creating that product until after I left because of exactly what you said. When you're at a big tech company, you are one small part of this huge giant machine and you have to be careful about what you say and who you need to get approval from. Which leads to my next point around one reason why people end up leaving is because of exactly that. They feel like they're a cog in the machine, right? You have, at a company like Google or Microsoft, you have literally 100,000 employees or more. And so what that means is you're doing a very small thing in a very small feature uh, and that may not be for fulfilling for you, right? And, and certainly there are exceptions and there are different opportunities in big tech, but by and large, the amount of scope that you can have at a company like Microsoft is certainly going to be smaller compared to a startup or your own company where you have, you know, the, the world is your, is your oyster and you can do whatever you want. Totally agree. And I do want to emphasize the fact that not every FANG engineer who leaves 
does so to become a founder or a CEO. Not everyone wants to create their own company, but you can find more scope or more impact or more sort of motivation in a smaller company, not just in creating your own company. So a lot of Fang engineers, they go to smaller startups where they'll feel like they can go from zero to one, build a product from scratch or have a lot of impact on their product, more so than if they were at Thang building just a small widget of a giant system. Now, to be clear, I don't want to paint such a negative picture of Thang to each their own, but this is just one of the reasons that so many people do leave because they feel like they can get more scope, more impact, more direct impact at a smaller company. Yeah, and I think, you know, what I tell people when I'm mentoring them through Tara or otherwise is if you want to grow rapidly in your career, you want to be in an environment where there are more problems and there are people to solve those problems, right? And I think a lot of big tech is still growing a lot, but there are a lot of companies out there that are very mature, very slow. And the result of that is they have, you know, years, potentially decades of people and organizational muscle on a problem area, which is actually not that large. And so you can't really go off and say, I'm going to create this new thing or implement this new widget because there's already like a staff engineer or a principal engineer who's in charge of that, right? So they have this scope conflict, uh, which does come up quite a bit. And this also and limits leads... their learning potential. Yes, exactly. And that was a, that's a perfect transition into, uh, you know, my last point, which is that I think that when you have a conflict over scope and you're not allowed to, you know, try out a new framework or a new tool because someone else is in charge or there's already someone doing it, then that does limit your learning, right? You don't have the energy or the ability to just try out and pick pick up new things. Um, and I'm talking about that not only technically, where it's like I want to try out this new, you know, JavaScript framework or whatever it is, but I'm also talking about it from the perspective of skills beyond engineering itself. So I'll give you a concrete example. I was at Meta for four and a half years. And if you actually look at it, Meta at the end of the day is an advertising driven company. They have literally more than 10,000 salespeople who all they do all day, as far as I know, is they talk to clients, they talk to advertisers, figure out how Meta can make more ad revenue. And what's so interesting is that in my four and a half years there, I was fairly senior, I led a team, I never once talked to a salesperson. And that's not a failure of the company. In some ways, you could argue that it's a, that's a, like a sign of success. So like Facebook is so good at like separating out engineering and sales. But for me, it felt to me like I was missing out on this entirely foreign skill that I just had no idea about sales. Like, how do I talk to a customer? Like, I had no idea how to do that. And so I think part of the motivation for me to leave and do Taro was there's a whole world of things that I have no idea about that I really want to get better at. And what better way to actually build that muscle than actually doing it? And that's what I'm doing with, with, with Taro right now. Absolutely. And at a small company, let alone your own company, you will almost always interact with all sorts of domains and roles within that company. The breadth of learning at a startup is certainly going to be higher and, and more expansive compared to a big tech company. But just to reiterate, Clement and I are not arguing that big tech is bad for your career. In fact, quite the opposite. I think there's a ton of learning opportunity and money to be made in big tech. In fact, Clement and I recorded a video on his channel about how FANG engineers and big tech engineers in general can make more than half a million dollars in total compensation. So I'll leave a link to that in the, in the description. Clement, I really appreciate you coming on. Thanks for sharing all your wisdom uh, about how you were at Big Tech and now successfully left to do Algo Expert um, and, and looking forward to doing this again sometime soon. Absolutely. Thank you.